Once there lived a fox and a crane. They both were good friends. One fine day, the fox invited the crane for a dinner. Would you like to come home for dinner? Yeah, I will come here. Okay, tell me, what will you cook for me? It will be a surprise. Okay, when and at what time shall I come? Tomorrow night, uh, about seven o'clock tomorrow evening. <laughs> Sounds good for me. See you tomorrow. See you. And be on time, huh? Sure, I will. The very next day, the crane arrived to the fox place on time. Hello. Please come and take your seat now. Dinner is ready for you. Oh, good. Tell me, what did you cook for me? I have cooked a delicious soup for you. I'm sure you will like the taste and enjoy it. The crane sat on the table, and the fox served the soup purposely in a plate. What happened? What's wrong? Uh, um, it's just that I can't eat it uh, with my long beak. Uh, what can I do? Oh, really? Well, at least you can wet the end of your long beak in the soup, right? Uh, well, uh, but uh, never mind. Uh, anyway. I hope you will return this visit and come and dine with me soon. Okay, I will leave now. See you tomorrow. Okay? Oh, of course, of course, I will. Uh, okay. How about tomorrow night? I will be there. So that night, the crane went home disappointingly with hunger. The very next day, the fox came to the crane's place. <laughs> Come in, my good friend. I was expecting you for a long time. What did you cook like that? Uh, since you are my special host, I cooked you a very favorite food. A delicious soup. Oh, oh really? Yeah, sure. Come and sit down. Dinner is served. But the fox was shocked to see the soup being served in a narrow long glass. So it couldn't reach the soup. Wow, the soup looks delicious. However, my good friend, I'm not able to insert my snout into the jar and drink the soup. Oh, oh well, at least you can lick the outside of the jar. <laughs> I'm right? Well, yes, but never mind. Listen, my dear friend, I'm not sorry to say this to you, but one bad turn deserves another. So kids, now listen to the moral of the story. As you sow, so you reap. Is that fine, kids? One day, a fox was walking out. Then suddenly, it heard a loud snapping noise and felt a sharp pain in his rear. Oh, oh, oh my God, that hurts. Oh, 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 oh. 
the fox looked behind him and saw his tail was caught in the trap he struggled and struggled to free himself but the tail was firmly stuck in the jaws with his last frantic effort the fox used all his efforts and broke free <laughs> my god i'm free now <gasps> the fox howled as he looked behind him and saw his tail still stuck up in the trap all he had left was a little stump at his oh, back god my tail my beautiful fluffy tail what will i do <laughs> oh god what will i do how will i face all the other foxes without my beautiful tail i will be so embarrassing <laughs> The fox deeply thought and finally struck up with an idea. He called all the other foxes together for a meeting. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I have cut off my tail on purpose and I want you all to do the same. A larger tail is more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> When we are being chased by dogs it gets in the way and when we get together for a talk you never know what to do with it do you wrap it around your feet do you sit on it or do you leave it out for someone to trip over come on tell me what will you do do you sit on it huh tell me tell me the answer ha huh. so now is the time to free yourself from your tail and join me in the toilet society <laughs> you wouldn't be saying that if you still had your beautiful tail ha huh. Yeah, you're only saying that out of your own self-interest and and your embrace. All the other foxes walked off laughing with their big bushy tails proudly pointing upwards. So kids, it is not always easy to fool others. This is the moral of the story. Once in a forest there lived a fox The fox wanted to meet his friend who was living very nearby What a wonderful day it is It was walking and walking and walking at a point of time It felt very thirsty and it stopped. Oh, it's very hot. I am feeling thirsty. If I can get some water, it would be better for me. When it proceeded further, it felt much more thirsty. It's very thirsty and as well as hungry. If I can get anything to eat it would be better. Hmm. Hmm, but nothing is there on the sideways. I must travel a long way to meet my friend. Oh no. I could have stayed back in my house.
sudden, the fox saw a bunch of grapes while passing by a tree. Mmm. It seems that the grapes would be very tastier. I haven't seen such a grape till now. Wow. I feel that these grapes would be tasty and very sweet, isn't it? Mmm. By any means, I must eat these grapes. It would be very better. The fox tried to catch up the grapes, but it tried and tried and tried, but it couldn't. Even then it couldn't succeed. It tried repeatedly. Hmm, still it could not catch the grapes. The bunch hung very high. So it could not reach there. Hmm. Uh, 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 I think that uh, uh, I don't think uh, uh, I know that these grapes are not at all tasty. I know that. Still it was saying to the grapes. Maybe I think that this is a dream. I won't try to catch the grapes anymore. These are not tasty. It seems to be tasty but not so. I know that it's not tasty. It was trying to avoid the grapes but it couldn't. Hmm. These grapes are not tasty. Yes, really. I know that. It's not tasty. I know for sure. These grapes are definitely not tasty. Knowing that these grapes are not tasty, why should I eat these? Hmm. The fox was angry. So, the fox said the grapes are not tasty because the fox couldn't reach the grapes. Do you know the moral of the story, guys? I will let you know. A bad workman blames his tools. As you saw in the story, the fox blamed that the grapes were not tasty. So kids, try hard until you succeed. One day, while he was walking out, the fox saw a crow swoop down and pick up a piece of cheese in its beak. The crow then flapped its wings and flew up onto a branch in a nearby tree. Hmm, that's a tasty-looking piece of cheese. Huh? I should have the cheese. I am the fox and I deserve it. I am a sly, small talking fox too. I will have it soon enough. The fox walked over to the foot of the tree. Hello. Hello Miss Crow. Not talking anything? Naturally, she was taught never to speak with her mouth full. So, she didn't greet the fox when he arrives to sit under the branch. How are you today? You're looking mighty fine. <laughs> Is there something different about you? Your feathers look so glossy and black and your eyes are sparkling like diamonds. And finally, hmm, you're looking so beautiful. The crow didn't answer with her mouth full of cheese. 
<laughs> if you can sing as good as you look, then I will have to call you queen of all the birds. <laughs> Flattered by all the compliments from the fox, wanting to be called the queen of all birds, the crow lifted her head and began to sing. Cow, cow, cow. At that moment, she opened her mouth. The cheese fell down into the waiting mouth of the fox below. Hmm. Ah, I got what I wanted. <laughs> the fox looked up at the sad crow in the tree. Oh, oh no! I dropped the cheese. You stolen my cheese. Cow, cow, cow! Not at all. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it was a fair enough trick, Wayne Crow, with your head up in the trees. You got the compliments, and I, hmm, got the cheese. Hmm, it's so delicious. Hmm. Kids, never trust a flatterer coming from others. This tells us the moral of the story. stories here then please subscribe this channel along with your friends and family enjoy all the videos of magic box magic box english a place to learn lot of good things with happiness don't forget to subscribe